So last week I did a video all about Doctor Who companions. It was called Which Doctor Had the Most Companions? It was the latest instalment of my Doctor Who Stats series where we go through the years, go through the Doctors and their eras, and look at which one had, you know, the most Dalek stories, or the most Cyberman stories, the most Master stories, etc. Now, whereas with all those three categories, you know, Dalek stories, Cyberman stories, Master stories, it's fairly obvious and clear what counts as a Dalek story and what doesn't, with companions, it's a bit more subjective because, you know, there have never really been rules and there still aren't really rules about what does count as a companion, what doesn't, you know, what do you have to do to be a Doctor Who companion? Do you have to travel in TARDIS? Do you have to appear in multiple stories? You know, what is the, the kind of dividing line between a companion and a supporting character or like a guest character? You know, all these questions are things that I considered when I was making my list of companions to include in the video. And, you know, inevitably as well, there are people in the comments afterwards saying, oh, you know, why was this character not there? Why, why did you include this character but not this one? And the logic I was going on in that video, I think, the thing I say is that a companion, you know, for the purpose of that video, is anybody who travels with the Doctor for two stories or more and kind of fulfills that assistant role. That was the logic I used for full-time companions, and there's also a subcategory called one-off companions, where I had characters like Astrid Peth or Lady Christina or Wilfred Mott or whatever. So in this video, I'm going to be doing a bit of a response to those comments I got and the suggestions I've got of other characters that perhaps should be classed as companions along with the rest. I'm going to give my two cents on these, you know, in hindsight, whether I agree or not with these suggestions, you know, some of which I'll admit i kind of forgotten about or hadn't really considered. So there will definitely be some where I go, actually, okay, no, that, that's fair enough. There will also be some as well where I'm like, mm, I'm not quite sure this character does count as a companion. It'll be an interesting video, hopefully an interesting debate, and be sure to leave your thoughts in the comments as well about each of these characters and whether you think they class as companions or not. So I don't think there was anything too controversial that I said about the first Doctor's era in that video, aside from the fact that I classed Katarina as a full-time companion and Sarah Kingdom as a one-off. Now, I think most people would say that these two both kind of count as one-offs, really. Neither of them was around for that long. You know, Katarina, she was technically in two stories, which was my logic there, you know, the Myth Makers and the Daleks Master Plan. You know, Sarah Kingdom was just in the Daleks Master Plan. That story was like 12 parts long, and she's not in all of it, but she's in a good deal of it. So I guess she technically appears for a larger number of weeks and then a large number of installments. It's one of the many grey areas when it comes to Doctor Who companions, and we're going to come across lots more of them in this video, so strap in. But yes, I think in that case, I will stick to my guns there, stick to my logic. You know, Katharina was in two stories, technically, even if it was just a very, very brief time in the TARDIS, Sarah Kingdom was only in one. The second Doctor's era, again, there's nothing too controversial in there in terms of, you know, the characters that I classed as companions in the video. I think a lot of people would agree that, you know, Ben, Polly, Jane, Victoria, and Zoe are the only second Doctor companions on screen. Um, I think one character that no one did mention in the comments was actually Professor Travers, who was a kind of supporting character, a recurring character who appeared across the two Yeti stories, and sort of by some of the logic that people would suggest for other companion characters in the future that we'll be getting onto very soon, um, you know, he could also technically be included, but this is one of those things where, you know, how far do you push it? Where do you draw the line with, like, recurring characters? Again, there are going to be loads more of these later on in the video. You know, I personally wouldn't class Professor Travers as a companion, but he certainly is a recurring character. I think the show's first proper recurring character that wasn't a companion, and so that is a separate category and something that does deserve to be recognised in its own right, but something that I would suggest is slightly different to the companion role. Then we move to the third Doctor's era, and perhaps the biggest controversy of the whole video, the decision that I made to not include either the Brigadier or any of the other unit characters, so Sergeant Benson and Captain Yates. Now, the Brigadier is another character like Professor Travers that, you know, personally speaking, you know, for me, I would never class him as a companion. Um, he certainly left his mark on the series, and he was certainly in a lot of stories, and I'm planning to look at those in more detail in the future with sort of which Doctor had the most Brigadier slash unit stories video because I think that would be an interesting thing to look at. But yes, you know, for me, the Brigadier, he doesn't fulfil that companion role. You know, he's a sort of assistant character in a sense, but I would say more of a supporting character because in almost every story that he's in, there are other companions filling the companion roles, like the Third Doctor and Joe, for instance, or Liz. And the Brigadier is sort of the third character there. He's sort of below them or sort of outside 
of that Doctor companion pairing, slightly peripheral to it. You know, yes, very important and played a very important role in all of those third Doctor stories that he was in, all of the unit stories, and likewise, you know, with Sergeant Benson and Captain Yates. And it's all open to interpretation, so, you know, make up your own rules by all means. But personally speaking, I don't and never will sort of class them as companions. The fourth Doctor's era as well, for the most part, was fairly uncontroversial and uncomplicated as well. I think the one thing that people did say is that if I'm including Romana twice as Romana 1 and Romana 2, so, you know, Mary Tam and Lala Ward, I should really be including K9 twice as well, because again, you know, technically speaking, there were two versions of K9 in the fourth Doctor's era, you know, I think four in total in the Hooniverse so far, if we include the ones that were owned by Sarah Jane, the first K9 Mark III, who joined her in K9 and Company, and then K9 Mark IV, who replaced the Mark III model when it was destroyed by the Crillitanes in School Reunion. But yes, you know, in the fourth Doctor's era itself, we had the original K9, K9 Mark I, up until the end of season 15, when it goes home with Leela, goes back to Gallifrey, and then, you know, the K9 Mark II basically replaced K9 Mark I in season 16, 17, and 18. So technically two iterations of K9 there. Um, it's one of those things where, you know, I think only fans would really know about that and really care about that. I certainly see the logic for, you know, including both canines if I also include both Romanas. I think that's kind of fair enough, I will admit. But I think it's one of those things where casual fans or viewers wouldn't really bat an eyelid like they just think of K9 as one character. The Fifth Doctor's era, on the whole, like, again, nothing too contentious. I mean, Chameleon is the big one, you know, do you count him as a one-off or a full-time companion? I cast him as a full-time companion because even though he only appears in, like, two stories, he is still there, you know, there's a kind of a gap between those two stories where he's there in the background, in the TARDIS, you know, just vibing, you know, not actually in the stories themselves, but he is technically still, you know, part of the TARDIS crew or the TARDIS team. The other one is the Brigadier. You know, if you're including him, you could make a case for him being a one-off companion in both Morgan and Dead and The Five Doctors, where, you know, he does play a slightly different role, I will admit, to the role he played in the Third Doctor's era. Uh, perhaps, you know, that's something that I, I could consider if I was doing an updated version of the video, but again, it feels a little bit strange to include him as a companion, sort of in any capacity, really. Nothing too much to say about the 6th and 7th Doctor's eras. I mean, we do have another recurring character across the two eras in the form of Sabalon Glitz. Now, once again, I'm not sure anyone will really seriously count him as a companion or even a one-off companion. But he's another character that definitely fits into that recurring character, supporting character category, you know, like the Brigadier and Professor Travers. Now, for the 8th Doctor, some people said that I should have included Chang Li as well as Grace Holloway. Now, for me, Chang Li is more of a companion to the Master in that story. You know, yes, he turns good at the end, you know, he joins the Doctor's side, the Doctor's cause, and he briefly travels back home in the TARDIS. But I don't think I'd class him as a companion to the Doctor, because like I say, he spends more time with the Master, more time being sort of morally sort of ambiguous, if you will, not necessarily evil, but just sort of like misguided. Yeah, I think there's definitely more of a case for Grace, you know, playing more of a companion role in that story than him. In the Ninth Doctor's era, we have Rose there as a companion all the way through, a full-time companion, or no, all the way through Series 1. No one will dispute that. Uh, but the thing that people did dispute a little bit is the way I classed both Adam and Captain Jack. So Adam, you know, again, he technically appears in two stories, so I classed him as a full-time companion. Yes, that seems like a strange way of putting it, and if I was doing the video again, I might change him to a one-off companion, but he was in those two stories, you know, Dalek and The Long Game, like Katarina in the first Doctor's era, like Perry in the fifth Doctor's era, like Mel in the sixth Doctor's era. So I felt I had to be kind of consistent there, even if it didn't make too much sense to think of him in that way. Likewise, some people took issue with me counting Captain Jack as a full-time companion for the Ninth Doctor. Now, I think this is a fair case to make, to be honest. You know, okay, he wasn't there throughout the whole of Series 1, but he was there for those crucial sort of final three or four stories, plus loads of stuff off-screen as well, you know, off-screen adventures in the expanded universe or whatever. And I think, you know, in terms of all of Captain Jack's appearances in the show or in the Hooniverse, you know, this is the one where he is most like a companion to the Doctor. You know, everything after this, he's sort of coming in from Torchwood or coming in from his own adventures to join the Doctor for a bit and then go off again. You know, here I think he is a full-time TARDIS traveller, even if, once again, his time in the TARDIS isn't all that long. So in terms of the 10th Doctor's era, I chose to include Mickey as a companion for the 10th Doctor, 
but not the ninth. My logic there is more of a supporting character in series one, and then kind of literally becomes a companion and comes into his own in series two, starting with school reunion. Um, you know, some people took issue with that, but again, I think that logic makes sense. I did also include all of the Christmas special and 2009 special companions as one-off companions as well, which, you know, raised a few eyebrows. But I think it's fair because all those characters sort of step up into the companion role in the stories that they were in, and they're also all marketed as companions as well. Like, Astrid Peth was marketed as the companion for Voyage of the Damned, and her action figure as well was included in a set of companion figures, you know, alongside Rose and Martha and Donna and Sarah Jane. The 11th Doctor's era is where it gets really interesting because there were lots of extra characters during this time, you know, travelling with the Doctor for just one story or two stories, and it's really a case of where you draw the line. So I had the three full-time companions in Amy, Rory, and Clara. River Song wasn't included there because, once again, I do see her as more of a kind of supporting or recurring character, like the Brigadier and Glitz and Travers. Again, you know, the way people kind of calling for her to be included, but personally, I just don't see River Song as a companion. It's certainly not in the 11th Doctor's era or the 10th Doctor's era. I did make an exception for the 12th Doctor's era. I included her as a one off companion for the Husbands of River Song, but that is a very different case because there is literally no one else filling the companion role in that story, so she just have to kind of step up into that role. And I want to be consistent with other one off Christmas companions we've had in the past, like Astrid or Jackson Lake, whatever. In terms of other characters in the 11th Doctor's era, lots of people mentioned Craig, Craig Owens, you know, James Corden's character from series 5 and 6. And, okay, fair enough, you know, I'll give you that one. Uh, he did appear in two stories, you know, he was kind of like a one-off companion who appeared again for a sequel. And in both those stories that he's in, I mean, Amy features very briefly in the first one, Amy and Rory feature very, very briefly in the second one. But yes, you know, to all intents and purposes, Craig is fulfilling that companion role. So even though it's one of those weird ones where it kind of, it seems strange to kind of call Craig a companion or to view him as such, I think I probably would call him a sort of a one-off companion and include him in that count if I was doing the video again. But then you have characters like Canton from the Series 6 opener, or Madame Vastra, Jenny and Strax, or Riddell, I think he was called, and Queen Efertiti in Dinosaurs and a Spaceship, and Brian Williams as well, you know, Rory's dad, who appears in two stories in the first half of Series 7. You know, with all those characters, I think for the most part, I would say that they are recurring characters, supporting characters, more than companions. Maybe Brian could be classed as like a kind of one-off companion because he does have adventures with the Doctor off screen, you know, by himself, uh, much like another character we'll get onto in a moment or so. So yeah, maybe for the 11th Doctor's era, you know, both Brian and Craig should be included as one-off companions in hindsight. The 12th Doctor's era, again, has quite a few recurring characters or sort of one-off characters that play quite a prominent role. You know, people like Riggsy, who appear in two stories. I mean, obviously Kate Stewart as well. I mean, she appears first in the 11th Doctor's era, but kind of more substantially in the 12th Doctor's era. You know, Vastra, Jenny and Strax once again. Courtney Woods, Danny Pink, Ashilda, and even Missy maybe in the second half of series 10. You know, she's around quite a lot. I think, you know, again, for all of these characters, I wouldn't class them as companions. They are definitely more kind of recurring characters or supporting characters in my view, but it's all open to interpretation. And then the 13th Doctor is another Doctor who has quite a lot of extra characters in her TARDIS in a given story. So, you know, do you include characters like the gang from Praxius? Do you include people like uh, Ryan's friend Thibaut, I think it was called, from Can You Hear Me? You know, people like that, or Lynn and Mitch in Resolution. Do you include the entire cast of Flux, like the Jericho, Claire, uh, Carvanista, who I included for the Fugitive Doctor, but not for the 13th? You know, do you include people like Belle and Vinder, Diane? The list for that series in particular goes on and on and on. But once again, I would say that those characters, you know, as prominent a role as they play, they are all recurring characters, supporting characters, not companions. Then finally, for the 14th Doctor, should he technically have Rose Noble also included as a one-off companion? On the basis of the Star Beast, I would say no. On the basis of the end of the giggle, where we learn that they've had kind of adventures, just the two of them, in the TARDIS off screen, then yeah, okay, probably. I think with this one, I felt it was a bit too early to call because, you know, we haven't seen Rose included on official lists of companions yet because that episode only aired like two months ago. 
But maybe again, if I was doing the video again in the future, and you know, for instance, they've had other expanded universe adventures, you know, by them, like on Big Finish or in the comics or whatever, then yes, I probably would include Rose in the list as a one-off companion for the 14th Doctor, or maybe even a full-time companion, but by the time she had more adventures. But not Sylvia, not Sean, not Shirley Ann Bingham or Kate Stewart, because once again, you know, for me, they're all supporting characters rather than companions. What do you think about all these characters that I have mentioned? Do you think they are supporting characters or companions? Companions, you know, where do you draw the line? What is your own personal criteria for what a companion is? And do you disagree with me? Do you agree with me you know, about River Song, the Brigadier, etc.? You know, things like that. Let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments below. I would love to hear your own personal views on this because, as I say, that there is no official consensus on what a companion is. It is all basically open to interpretation. Please do go and check out my Doctor Who Companion Stats video in the description below. I will leave a link there for you to watch it if you haven't already. If you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new for more stuff like this in the future. But otherwise, until the next one, thank you so much for watching and goodbye for now.